Kim, what's on your radar? Well, actually, this kind of goes along with what you were talking about on your radar a little earlier, Ryan, but Joe Biden's approval ratings have hit an all-time low. I feel like we keep saying this week after week, but each week it keeps getting worse and worse. This past Sunday, a USA Today Suffolk poll put Biden's approval numbers at 38 percent. Yikes. The same poll put Trump three points higher at the end of his term in mid-January after the storming of the Capitol. Other polls don't have him doing quite as badly. Emerson College gives him 41 percent and Rasmussen gives him 42. But no matter how you look at it, it's dismal. Nearly half of those surveyed said he has done a worse job than they expected. And nearly two thirds, 64 percent, say they don't want Biden to run for a second term, including 28 percent of Democrats. Wow. Now compare that to where Trump is. 58 percent of Americans, including 24 percent of Republicans, don't want him to run. So it's less popular for Biden to run again in 2024 than it is for Trump to run again. This is not good news for Democrats, and it's putting them in a very precarious position, considering Kamala Harris's ratings are even worse than Joe Biden's. Her approval rating is sitting 10 points lower at 28 percent. The Independent reports that's lower than Dick Cheney's lowest rating of 30 percent. I mean, I get that Kamala Harris isn't that likable, but a lower approval rating than Dick Cheney, even years, even after years of casualties in Iraq and Afghanistan. I mean, the withdrawal in Afghanistan was a debacle. Many of us wanted to see the end of that war and thought Biden pushed the date back from Trump's May deadline to August in order to have a more orderly evacuation. That didn't happen. But I don't know if anyone really thinks that was Kamala Harris's fault. I mean, sure, she was the last person in the room with Joe Biden, but it's doubtful people think she was the one calling the shots. So it's very bizarre that her ratings are even lower than Dick Cheney's. But nonetheless, again, this puts the Democrats in a very precarious position. If Joe Biden doesn't raise up his approval ratings in the next couple of years, which you would think is enough time. But then again, like I mentioned, week after week, these ratings keep getting lower. They're going to have to start scrambling to think of a replacement. That's right. Someone is going to have to replace Joe Biden as the nominee in 2024, and it doesn't look like it's going to be Kamala Harris. If this happens, it would absolutely be unprecedented. I don't think it's ever been done before, but the Democrats would have to find an entirely new presidential candidate with an entirely new vice presidential nominee than the current sitting duo. So let's think about who it could be. I know it's a long way away, but I guarantee you Democrats are already thinking about this. So why can't we? Now, of course, they'll have a primary with debates and the fanfare for the liberal media, which has suffered quite a bit since Trump left office. This will definitely be a boon to their ratings for CNN and MSNBC, which I'm sure they're salivating over. But the Democratic Party will for certain already have some favorites in mind. So let's go through some of the list. Pete Buttigieg is first on the list. The former South Bend, Indiana mayor and current secretary of transportation was at one point the golden boy of the party. Lots of momentum surrounded his campaign after Kamala dropped out of the race, but he ran into trouble with the Southern black vote after it came out he had some problematic racial policies back when he was mayor. His likability doesn't seem to be increasing as transportation secretary, considering we're having a major supply chain crisis threatening our economy, and he's busy trying to rehab his image by talking about racist roads. Now, Stacey Abrams, she's also one to watch. Similar to Buttigieg, she doesn't have a lot of political experience, but voters don't care about that as much as the establishment thinks. Voters want fresh and new. The problem with Abrams, though, might be that she might be viewed as too far left to get the moderate vote and certainly too far left for independence. Now, Hillary Clinton, uh, do we think she'll really run again? Uh, It's doubtful. We're probably more likely to see Michelle Obama run before Hillary jumps back into the fray. But now Michelle Obama, that would be incredibly popular. And to be honest, of anyone, I think she's probably the Democrats' best hope at reviving the party. She's smart. She's well-liked. She checks all the woke boxes. And George W. would probably campaign for her, especially if Trump is the GOP nominee. She'd be viewed as a moderate, which would get independents and moderate Democrats. She'd get the Southern black vote. Not sure she'd get the progressive wing of the Democratic Party unless they feel pressured into voting for her because of her identity and beloved status within the party. Now, the party could go really old school and bring back someone like John Kerry. He's sort of Biden-esque and was once the party's nominee. This would piss off progressives, but maybe the party thought ahead already by making him the nation's climate czar. With climate change being one of the progressive wing's most important issues, it would be hard to claim John Kerry isn't focused enough on this when he's the guy they designated to lead the charge. It almost seems pre-planned and a little too perfect. 
And no matter how dismal Biden's ratings may be, swapping out a sitting president doesn't seem likely. What's more likely is Kamala is swapped out for someone who they think might breathe life into the ticket and energize the vote. We could probably expect something like a Biden Kerry or a Biden Abrams ticket in the future, or maybe even a Biden Michelle Obama ticket if people press hard enough. But how they move Kamala out and someone else in will be a very interesting thing to watch. Uh, so, Ryan, do you think they're actually going to go for this? Do you think they'll swap Kamala out? Or do you think Joe Biden will say, I'm not going to run again in four years and they'll actually try to move someone else in? I think if he's healthy enough to run, he's going to run. Uh, and I think, yes, they will try to swap swap Harris out because they'll. You think so? Yeah, I think so. Because mm -hmm. they have to mix something up. Now, How they would do that. Though? What are they going to so. say? Well, they would have to swap in. Um, somebody like Abrams, because you cannot, right. you know, just you, you certainly can't kick a black woman off the ticket for a white guy. Like right. that's that's not going to fly in the in Stacey Abrams Democratic is not going to be any more popular, I don't think, than Kamala Harris, maybe even less. Popular. Stacey you know Abrams what? is a much more effective politician. Think though. So? Yeah. And, and comes really off as much more speaker. authentic. Yeah. Yeah. She I mean, when that woman speaks, I went to the Democratic uh, the debate in Georgia and I mean, she she was up there speaking. She kind of did a pre, you know, for the crowd only, or maybe it was televised. Actually, her speech, but she's fantastic at speaking. So I maybe do the, think the that Democrats she will... need someone who refuses to concede <laughs> in, the, in their uh, in their corner. Uh, no, I, I will bet I will bet either of you any amount of money, and by any amount I mean twenty dollars, <laughs> that it will be Joe Biden <laughs> and Kamala Harris in twenty twenty four. And then Kamala Harris will be the Democratic nominee in 2028. That's my no uh, way. That's my prediction. She, uh, she's it not absolutely will enough. be. Okay. Yeah, no, and she's going to lose. She'll but be that's going to be. The she'll best. be at 17 percent by then. Yeah, yeah that's what gonna... it's going to be. And what people should remember, though, about Biden's approval rating is that yes, he's at 38 now, and that's you know around where Trump was you know at this time. But Trump was poised to win re-election. So yeah. you can in in this polarized environment. You can be in the 30s. You know, when Bush was in the 30s, that was it for him. Right. I mean, he couldn't run for a third term anyway. Uh, but you can get down into the 30s at this point in your tenure. And because the, your supporters hate the other person so much, they might not approve of your job, but they like you better than they like the other guy. So they'll come back. And that's why Trump, I mean, he ended up losing. But, you know, without the pandemic, yeah. maybe, it be, maybe it's a lot and closer. And not up against Biden. Like, Trump's right. fortunes in January of 2020 are, I'm going to be reelected unless there's a, a global catastrophe that I badly handle and my opponent is Joe Biden. Those two things needed to happen in order right. for him to lose, and they both happened. Yeah. Right. And we and we have to remember, he didn't win. Right. So even with his ratings being this low at this point in his presidency, he did not win a real he didn't win a second right. term. And um, it, if yeah. he runs again, then that would be the gift for Joe Biden. I'm sure that's what they're hoping for is for a Trump. But if anyone else runs on the Republican ticket, not anyone, but yeah. there's like a slew of people who could run that would probably beat Joe Biden, especially if it's Ron DeSantis. Um, yeah, that's going to be that. tough. Yeah, I think that's the harder. I think it's well. I think Trump probably will win. Why or, or will run? Why wouldn't he? He's going to get the nomination if he does, and then he's going to have like a decent. I, I agree. I think Joe Biden is likely to beat him, but it's not going to be a sure thing. So why not try? Unless he just doesn't feel like doing it because you know he's. Retired. Yeah. I don't know. But I mean, at the end of the day, Democrats need to start scrambling, I think, and finding just more popular people, yeah. people who are more liked, kind of what you guys were talking about on Ryan's radar. Just getting somebody who's likable, people connect <laughs> with people, yeah. you know, somebody who people says, yeah, this is I, I can identify with this person. I feel like I could hang out with them and crack open a beer like with Elizabeth In theory, Warren. It doesn't sound house. so hard, but <laughs> and yet <laughs> like a Fetterman type. But there aren't many Fettermans out there. Yeah. yeah. Well, and they're all kind of trying, like I mentioned, Elizabeth Warren, you know, cracking open the beer, being like, let's have a, you know, and it's like, you know, people aren't going to, people would rather sit down with you for tea, you know, Elizabeth, not yeah. crack a beer with you. But they're, they've got to kind of figure that out. Like, who could they, who could people feel like I could be friends with this person? Yeah. Uh, and that's what they've got to find and with somebody who has also the policy that they want, right? The policy ideas as right. well. So it's going to be would, tough. Who, who would, uh, who would have a. Who would drink a rosé in a wine cave with me? That's their, uh, that's their... But, you know, that's why I say Michelle Obama, I think, is actually the yeah. only hope that the party has if Michelle Obama would possibly run. I mean, 
you know, that would be a return back to a lot of people would think to the Obama era, which a lot of progressives, people like myself are not thrilled about that. But I still think she's the one that would maybe get the most likability. No, I, I agree with that analysis. Um, thank you for that, Kim. We will have more Rising right after this. Stay with us.